Hey, what's going on everybody? I am Pastor J.D. White, the Senior Pastor of the Greater Olivet Baptist Church here in Detroit, Michigan. This is the city of faith and the place where faith wins. I wanna take this time to welcome you to the Life Broadcast where we believe that faith is just not a saying, but rather it is a lifestyle. I am of the opinion that we as believers in Christ, if we need anything, then what we need more of is faith in God. I want to encourage you. I want to let you know. I want to inform you. I want to announce to the world that not only will God do it, but God will do it for you. Do me a favor. Say to yourself, God will do it for me. Let's jump into the broadcast and I'll see you at the end. Amen. Let's jump into the word of our God. The book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter number 15. The book of Matthew chapter number 15. And we're going to... Begin reading in verse number 22. The book of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 22. Amen. I will ask that you stand to your feet in reverence of God's word, as that is the custom of this house. The book of Matthew, chapter number 15. Beginning in verse number 22. There you shall find these words. And behold, is that right? A woman of Canaan came from that region, cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, Not a word. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cried out after us. He answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, Great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. You can be seated. It is always interesting to me, it is always interesting to me when we deal in this with this dynamic or in this season where Jesus is doing or providing a miracle. Don't worry about it, just look at me, it's fine. It's, it's interesting, it's interesting to me uh, when we uh, read scripture and look at scripture and uh, we look at this dynamic where uh, Christ is performing a miracle. Uh, I, I, I find it interesting primarily because most times when you see Jesus uh, doing a miracle, uh, it simply goes something like this. There, Jesus is in a town, uh, someone is in need, uh, the person, people, or individuals in need approach uh, Jesus for whatever it is they are in need of, and then ultimately, most times, somebody comes up against the person or people who are in need. Uh, you don't believe them? Look at the story of blind Bartimaeus. Here it was, Jesus was simply coming by. Uh, Jesus, a uh, blind Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. And then everybody else told him that he should be quiet. Uh, here it is, right here in our text. This time, it is not the crowd that's telling uh, the individual to be quiet, but rather it is the disciples. It, uh, uh, it, it is the ones who are walking with Jesus. It's the ones who, 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 who are sleeping with Jesus. It is the ones who are supposed to be of the closest relationship to Jesus, and they're trying to serve as a barrier between uh, uh, what an individual needs and the person who can help them. Uh, and that serves as an assignment to each and every one of us uh, in that what we must look at uh, is what role we play uh, in somebody else getting to Jesus. 
Jesus. Uh, the question is, are we the conduit? Are we the vehicle? Are we the one that the person can be used to get the help that they need? Or are we the one simply standing in the way? Uh, uh, that is the challenge, church, because if the truth uh, really be told, we, are, uh, we can assess our lives and come to the conclusion uh, that it is very easy to stand in the way of, uh, of somebody else getting what they need from God. Uh, you don't believe me? It's only a few of us in here. Uh, but if I allow your faces to frustrate me, uh, that'll be getting in the way. Uh, if, 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 if we walk in here uh, and we allow the attitudes of others uh, to frustrate us, uh, then we're allowing them uh, to get in the way. Uh, and that's the challenge that all of us has. Uh, the challenge that all of us has, uh, uh, it's really twofold. Uh, we have to make an independent confession uh, that we're not going to allow uh, anybody to have that much power uh, that uh, they, we allow them to stand in our way. Uh, that's why uh, uh, even when we're discouraged, uh, we got to serve anyway. Because uh, I can't allow you to get in the way. Uh, that's why uh, even when I don't want to get dressed, uh, I still got to get up and get dressed. Uh, because I can't allow y'all uh, to get in my way. Uh, that's why uh, even when I don't feel like it, uh, I got to get up and do it anyway because I can't allow y'all to get in my way. Why? Because I walk with Jesus. Because I talk with Jesus. Because I know he's real. Because even if I got to go and go by myself, I know God in an independent way. And because I know him in an independent way, I got to worship him in an independent way. No matter what the congregation does, you were not there when he changed my heart. You were not there when he raised me. You were not there when he saved me. You were not there when he helped me. You were not there. And because I know him, I'm challenged on an independent level to check our relationship. It's the disciples. Yeah, it is. Sometimes, church, we have to watch how easy it is to be of the elected of God and still get in the way. Oh, uh, we, 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 we have to watch how easy it is uh, to be the preachers, the singers, the teachers, the leaders of God and still be in the way. We got to watch. We got to check ourselves because the truth of the matter is that it, uh, 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 it is sometimes hard to take on what God told uh, what God told Joshua when he said don't be afraid of their faces because sometimes it's not that your face scares me but rather it's that your face aggravates me and if I'm not careful and, and, and I allow aggravation to come in then the devil can have his way and what is supposed to be God's time is now what I am robbing God of because I've allowed my own self to get in the way your face doesn't scare me it irritates me because I'm trying to understand what more do I have to do I'm trying to understand what more do I have to give I'm trying to understand why the way you not excited when you got up this morning I'm trying to understand what about grace and mercy don't you understand I'm trying to figure out why don't you believe the Bible because if you really believe then you would be reminded that in order to have great worship you don't need 90 you just need 3 that's what the Bible says that wherever ain't got to be greater out of that he said wherever 
to think. Uh, God says that I need to put my mind uh, on things above. Uh, and the truth of the matter uh, is that so many of us uh, are only concerned about low-hanging fruit. Uh, and because we're only concerned about low-hanging fruit, uh, we only get low-hanging results. Uh, and so God said, uh, I want you to think on things above. Uh, because when you learn how to think on things above, uh, you'll be able to assess a situation uh, from 50 yards away uh, and say, that ain't even worth my time. Uh, because I'm focused on things above. Uh, they'll be like, oh, you acting funny. Uh, I'm just focused on things above. Uh, I ain't really changed, uh, but I'm just investing my time on things that can give me results. disciples have an opinion about a situation that is technically in this instance here none of their business. Look at it. You don't believe me. Here it is. It says verse 22, Behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Lord, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter severely demon possessed. 23 says, he answered her not a word. It means Jesus, who she's talking to, as it mumbled a word. But then it says, and his disciples came, watch this now, the disciples goes to Jesus, his Bible says they came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she cries out after us. Child of God, can I tell you, you have to watch the manipulators in your life who will try to tell you what your response should be to certain situations. That's really what the disciples here are trying to do. The disciples here are trying to manipulate Christ and tell him. That's what the Bible says. Don't get mad at me. It says, and they urged him. <laughs> Which really, when you really think about it, really is a sign of disrespect because he's Jesus. <laughs> and what makes you think that Jesus needs your urging? <laughs> uh, the Bible said, he said not a word. <laughs> and they said, oh, he ain't talking. <laughs> so let us give him what to say. <laughs> and you better learn how to make sure that you are able to identify the people in your life who walk with you but don't know you. They walk with you but don't, but don't understand your value. They walk with you, watch this, and they don't understand your silence. Here Jesus is. All Jesus, he isn't stuck. He's just silent because everything deserves. Because sometimes, church, you need to get the whole story before you respond. And so here it is. Jesus is silenced and they're responding. Yeah. Right. So here it is. They don't understand the silence of God and so they go and they conspire amongst themselves. They come up with what it is that they're going to try to tell Jesus. They want to put their response in his mouth. Here's why. Because the response out of their mouth has no power anyway. And so here it is. You have to learn how to make sure you are able to identify the people who are trying to become powerful through you. Their words ain't got no power. So even had the disciples said, your daughter is healed, it wouldn't have made a bit of difference anyway because they didn't have the power. Isn't it interesting that, well, isn't it interesting that they did not urge Jesus to heal her but rather they urged Jesus to send her away. They didn't urge Jesus to help her but rather they tried to urge Jesus to get her out the picture and we have to make sure that we are mindful of those people who are trying to use our titles and our power for their own powerless agenda. Do I got anybody under the sound of my voice that can tell somebody you can't get your power through me. I'm not going to do your dirty work. And so here it is. Look at what he says. They like Jesus. Urge him. Right? The disciples say they began to urge Jesus. Send her away. For she cries out. Here it is. She cries out after us. No, 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 no. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible, the Bible, no. no, the Bible says she cried out after him. They come back with a report that says they cried out after us. No, no, no. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. There, 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 there was no us because she understood.
knew it, but the power came from. And so we have to watch. We have to watch those people in our lives. Watch this church. We have to watch those people in our lives who try to attach themselves to become a part of your us when it is, un when it is unnecessary. <laughs> uh, let me say this, I got mostly leaders here. <laughs> uh, we may have a leadership team, <laughs> but there is only one pastor. <laughs> and so when people come through that door <laughs> and they're saying, let me talk to the pastor, <laughs> I don't need y'all to have a us response. <laughs> what you do is, <laughs> don't respond. <laughs> don't respond talking about what I want or what I like or what I think you bring it to me and you let me respond based off how I want to respond and that is their problem the problem is the disciples are trying to respond on behalf of Jesus when Jesus is not talking here's why because just because you are in leadership it does not mean you have to understand my just because uh, you are in leadership, uh, that means you follow as you are directed. Uh, if I'm quiet, uh, then you let my silence serve as a sign. Uh, then we just quiet. Uh, anybody remember growing up uh, and playing follow the leader? Uh, even when you don't know, uh, you follow me uh, if I'm writing. Uh, when, even when you don't know what I'm writing, uh, sit down somewhere. Uh, get a pen and Sail because y'all are too fickle and phony. Your 
too emotional. You are y'all, y'all are too stubborn that y'all don't even see what the real agenda is. Y'all walking with me and you see me but don't see me. So he says, What in the world am I supposed to do if you send her away? If I didn't come for the lost and she's lost, but you want to send her away, what in the world am I here for? So, verse 5 says, she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Here, here, here. This, 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 is, this is interesting uh, because uh, uh, her request, uh, when you look at her story, uh, what you'll notice uh, is that all of her requests are led by worship. Uh, in other words, here's what she says. She says, listen, uh, I don't, I'm not waiting, here it is, I'm not even waiting to talk to you before I worship you because I understand you're worthy of worship even if I'm not worthy of a response. <laughs> she says, even, I, even if I'm not worthy of a response, you are worthy of my worship. And so, if, if, uh, but what I do understand uh, is that whatever, while everybody else has an opinion and has their rights and has their titles, uh, what I have is my worship. Uh, and what my worship can't get done, uh, I guess it just ain't gonna get done. Uh, listen to what she says. Uh, she says, I got to go to Jesus, uh, but I ain't got no money to take her. Uh, I ain't got no alabaster oil to take her. Uh, I ain't got no crew I got to go with to run with. Uh, but what I do have and I got some tears that I can't stop from flowing. I got a little volume on my voice. I got a little bending down in my knees. So I'm going to come with all that I have. Because all I got to my name is worship. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem with too many of us. The problem with this many of us in the modern day church is we think we're too cute to worship. It ain't enough people for us to worship. We ain't got an organist we can't worship. We ain't got a drummer we can't worship. But every now and again, you need to think, you need to remember the old churches down south. When they like this, I got two hands and I'll just clap my hands. Oh, there ought to come a time, church, where at 12 o'clock we ain't doing nothing else but worshiping. I know the service is supposed to begin, but at 12 o'clock, because that is the worship hour, we ought to come in here, we ought to get down on our knees, and we ought to kick worship off with worship. Isn't that crazy? That we want to kick worship off with everything else other than worship. But it Listen. I pray that you all have enjoyed this uh, episode of Living Your Faith Every Day. Uh, on the screen, you're going to be able to find all of our information, our giving information. You'll be able to find how to connect with us, and you can catch us each and every week at this exact same time. Every Sunday, 9.30 a.m., every Monday night, 7.30 p.m., we'll be right here, Living Our Faith. I'm Pastor J.D. White. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be blessed.